Okay, guys, I'm back. We gonna try this again. <laughs> we gonna try this again. Yeah, shout out to everybody who tuned in the first time. But we... Um... Yeah, because... Okay, good. There we go. <laughs> What's going yeah, on? good. That's so weird. Man. I I don't know, man, but yeah, finally. <laughs> yeah, but I was trying to use my laptop before, and it, oh, I'm, I need some. I'm bright. Um, I was trying to get um my laptop with the new camera because it has a nice panoramic view. But what that wasn't. I was using. I don't. I don't know. How are you, man? Oh man, I'm good, man. I can't complain. I'm just happy to have you back, man. It's been a while. Oh yeah. When did like... we? When did we talk? I was trying to remember. Um. I would say like two months ago. Sorry? Yeah. How long ago? At least like two, three months ago. It was a minute ago. Yeah, I was. I think it was even longer than that. I think it was like, uh, I don't know. When was it? Why it was a minute. Somebody said I turned comments off. I didn't turn any comments off, people. <laughs> somebody just texted me, Pete. <laughs> yeah, comments on over here. So I don't know who... Of got a malfunction going on, but I ain't turned nothing off. <laughs> yeah, you got, you you control the comments. Everybody else say hi to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to everybody who's tuning in. Like, man, I really couldn't wait for this to happen again, dog. And you know, I'm always checking out your content, man. I'm still a fan over here. You know. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. So how you been? I've been good. I was good. I had. I've been home for exactly a month now, which is great. First time in a long time. So it's four weeks yesterday I've been home in Toronto. And okay. surprisingly, I'm not tired of it or I'm not bored. I'm happy. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's always good to um, take breaks every once in a while. That's yeah. what I do. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm going to be... Um, I'm gonna be leaving again soon, I think. I'm d I, maybe two weeks tomorrow. I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Cool, cool. Where do you live again? Oh, I live in Saginaw, Michigan. Saginaw. Where is that? How far is that from Detroit? You're up top. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you're. Yeah. An hour away. Yeah. From oh, from Detroit. Yep. Oh, you're not that far. No. Not, oh, I was thinking you were like. Um, up really far, like you know, at the top of Michigan, where all the lakes are and all the cottages and all that. Yeah. So are you are you near um, Port Huron? No, I'm near Flint, Flint and um, Bay City stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, Flint. I want to do a video there. There's a couple of things, but yeah, that's where I'm stopping first. I'm stopping in Detroit for three days, two or three days. I'm gonna be there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's some there, a couple of stuff I've always wanted to do in Flint, but uh, I'm not sure if I'll have time this time. I'm still thinking about it. I don't know if I've ever driven up to Flint. I can't remember. I think the further... No, I... Where... Uh, Ro, no, Rochester... Wherever Madonna's from. That's the furthest I went up. Oh, okay. She's from Bay City. Yeah. So that's as far as north as I've been in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. as far north. Yeah. yeah, that's cool, man. Um... I really enjoyed the OJ video, man. I, it was just, like, because I don't know, like, the full story. All I know is the verdict, which is bad, because that's pretty much what I grew up on was the verdict. But I didn't know, well, I didn't know, like, the backstory of that. So it was really informative. Yeah, I mean, the OJ thing is uh, something I've worked on a long time. And I like to present only like the facts i don't like to go into conspiracy theories because there's a conspiracy anybody can have a conspiracy theory about anything right mm -hmm. and the oj conspiracy theory is like like the victims ron and nicole were involved with drugs and the drug cartel and all this stuff and i mean they make i read parts of it afterwards because some people write me like oh and like a lot of people you know think he's innocent so i was like what's the reasoning behind that and they told me like you know wrote back some interesting stuff but i'm like yeah but he he really abused his wife a lot over the course of many years and it just escalated and his blood was everywhere her blood was everywhere 
You yeah. know, you know. Even his lawyers looked shocked when he got off. <laughs> his own lawyers look are like what <laughs> innocent okay <laughs> like not guilty but yeah it was a, a fun one to do because um in it in a weird way because those locations are iconic like i mean like i'm a little older than you so i remember i remember seeing those on the news every night mm -hmm. 24 hours a day they were covering oj stuff and like the Nicole's house, his house, all that stuff. So it's crazy to actually. I've I've driven by Nicole's condo many times. I mean, it's a major through throughway through Redwood uh, Bundy Drive. So I've driven by it, looked at it, but that was the first two times I ever kind of got out and really did all that like filming. And wow, it's crazy. Yeah. So how was the energy like just from that video alone? Because a lot of your videos, um, it'd be very like subtlety, like just peaceful. But that one was kind of dark, man. I was, I was just like, "Ooh, let me skip some parts." <laughs> it was too dark, but well, I mean, I could have gone darker too because I mean, I just, I, I clinically de 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 described the, um, the murders. Like I, I really just said, okay, she had this. You know, this last year of throw, Ron had 37, I think, some of that to his body and the defense. But I mean, I found some websites that with pictures, like major pictures, like without the sheets or without covered up. I'm like, I can't show that. And like, mm -hmm. really, I could end the fight and how, like, how the theories of how it went down, like where, uh, how she was attacked from behind. It was just like, even that, I was just like, okay, I don't have to say all of this exactly. I mean, Right. You know, like the pictures I put in speak for themselves and, and the blood and being there at night. Cause I went there, I was in Los Angeles for seven weeks. So I went by that, I went by there about four or five days into the trip at night, like around midnight to get the night shots. Cause I thought I was going to do it right away. And that was weird. Cause I was out there by myself at night. I mean, it's a beautiful area, right? It's, it's Brentwood, Los Angeles. It's not like, you know, uh, Kensington area, Philadelphia. It's this is an upscale neighborhood, but it's got an eerie vibe at night. All those places in in Los Angeles do like the Beverly Hills, Hollywood Hills. After dark, they're so quiet. Like you just think anything's lurking around. And uh, then I went through the alleyway at night. Got so, and then I didn't. Then I didn't finish the video for another six weeks. To me, I I just kept putting it off because I was like, it's so much information. But I filmed Ron. I went up to Ron's grave because he's far. He's way past. Uh, no, he's before Malibu. Okay. So I got. He's buried in the same cemetery where Karen Carpenter is. So I planned to visit her, and then Ron. So yeah, it was just a lot of. There's a lot of work. That one was a yeah. lot of work because there's so many locations. I I could have gone to more locations, like the freeway with the 405 with the Bronco Chase. I could have gone to the. Um, uh, the ice cream place they went to, then downtown City Hall, Santa Monica City Hall, where he had lost a civil case. There was more plays, but I was like, this is enough. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think you did a exceptional job just with what you put out because I think everybody um, who watched or whatever like that, I believe, like, well, because I, I read some of the comments it was more like a um, interrogation or something like that. Some of the comments and stuff like that, but I think you did an exceptional job, like always and stuff. Thanks. But, but it's just the OJ thing is really like kind of like pulling teeth because people gonna believe what they won't. But I'm just happy that you focus on the victims because these were human beings. These people had a life and they was young. And yeah. when you think of how old they were back in 1995 and compared to now, you just like, dang, I outlive Ron Goldman. I outlive Nicole Simpson. It's just kind of like deep. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think, I think Ron was what, 28 years old or something. Like, and that's pretty young. But when you yeah. look at photos of him, I'm like, I don't look like that at 28. Like he look, he's a well put together dude. Like, you know, he look, he's always, playing. these are formal family photos. And Nicole's always like glamour shots, like even when she's out on the street with her kids. But she was only thirty six or thirty seven. She was a she was a young lady as well. Um, there's like with the verdict and all that. It's hard. It was I just kind of let I I put the verdict at the beginning 
of the video because I knew that like a lot of the reason why the people like people were upset when he got off but also a lot of people were happy when he got off mm -hmm. because it, they thought if he was convicted it was going to start another LA riot which happened just a couple of years before yeah right so I just wanted to kind of stay away with that I just present the facts but you know you mm -hmm. can't blame somebody for some people for like thinking because the defense johnny cochran most mostly johnny cochran put together a pretty good you know when you listen to what he said and when you and you listen to the rebuttals and the facts or what they say are the facts put forth for oj they're pretty compelling and johnny mm -hmm. cochran you're not competing if you're in a courtroom with johnny cochran talking he's gonna win yeah <laughs> you know what i mean that's a he was he, there's he just commands it right like he just commands the core when he puts up um there's video of oj at the recital that i couldn't find and i was so pissed off so i i couldn't find it but i found it afterwards of course and it's so funny johnny cocker's like so oj was in a bad mood and oj was really pissed off at the recital was he now? Because I really, I think we have video of him at the recital. And then he goes, because <laughs> Christopher Darden was the other prosecutor with Marshall. Knight. He goes, he goes, this one's for Mr. Darden. Play the video. And they play the video and OJ's like happy and high five and people are just like, hey, you just got to give it up for, for, <laughs> for Johnny Cocker, man. <laughs> you know, you got, everybody deserves a defense. And if you can, do, if you can buy a good defense, you know, he said, OJ still, OJ's never paid a penny though in the civil suit, so. Yeah, and just growing up and getting older, you just realize how much of a narcissist he was. Like, I, <laughs> yeah, I see it because I'm around narcissists all the time, so I could just see the um, deception and just he kind of like he he was just trolling before it became a turn. Like, right? Every, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, he, I, all the videos I see of him now, like he's go, he's pretending he's pretending to stab the newscaster with a knife, like having fun with it, and it's like, dude. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. He's kind of trolling everybody. I mean, he's out there. I think he's in Florida now. Somebody said, somebody yeah. wrote, said they live near. They, he lives near there or plays golf and I see him all the time. Who knows if, if it's true or not? But you know, he'll he he. He has money, but I don't know if he's, you know, he doesn't have as much money as he would have if he didn't happen to kill two people. Right. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. And also, like, because I'm pretty much going to, like, discuss um, my favorite top five of Scott Tate. You know? Oh, okay. So, um, the second one, well, you made me do a video on this, was James Bird Jr. Oh, my gosh. And... A whole lot of people didn't know about that, and and I ran across it um, through your channel and stuff, man. Because I really be digging through the archives and stuff. So when I saw that, because it made me want to watch the movie too, and just the um, seriousness of when you were speaking about it, and it's like you still see the blood trail on the road. Yeah, like it's it's. It just was like heinous and stuff like that, and I just love that you care so much. Like you don't have no, um, like you colorblind when it comes to stuff like that. Oh yeah. And it's like we don't really get people like you to really tell our stories like that with grace. So I appreciate you for that. And what made you do that one? Well, first of all, thank you because I, I, you know. I realized that, that like a lot of the, like, you know, James Bird's not, um, he's not hip hop culture or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I do cover like a lot of hip hop culture and African American subjects and black movies, you know, Boys in the Hood and all that. This stuff mm -hmm. I grew up on, stuff I love. And I realized that nobody else really covers it in the same, like, you know, they'll talk about it in reaction videos and stuff, but nobody goes yeah. to the locations like other YouTubers that do. And I, I just hope that the black man is like okay this guy's cool you know, yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? like, it's cool that he does it because i want to do it for everybody that wants to see it black or white you mm -hmm. know so when it comes to james bird that's a case i remember 
so well hearing about it and just i mean it made it, it made international headlines and by international i'm speaking about america and canada so yeah. i you know i don't know about the rest of the world but it made headlines and to me i remember being younger just thinking that's the most horrifying i mean for because i hate bullies right bullies yeah. i hate them and to me three guys against one those are bullies and they're targeting him because of the color of his skin you know that's racist and a bully so mm -hmm. it was just it's a story i always wanted to to tell and that when i planned to go to texas two years ago 2020 that was one of the main ones i had in my head and i almost missed it because i was in shreveport louisiana i'd already been in texas and i went over to shreveport to do something else and then my friend was with me and i had to drop him off at his house in Texas, which wasn't far, but then I had to really hightail it like fast down to um, Jasper, no, uh, Ty not Tyler, Texas, Jasper? Yeah, Jasper, yeah. Jasper, I had, to hide, I had to get there really fast and I knew that it's a small town so the cemetery would be open. Mm -hmm. You know, big cities, they close the gates, but I knew a small town so I'd probably be able to get there. But um, I passed the cemetery first, I went, rushing by because I wanted to get to the road because it was getting it's January so it gets dark by 6 30 so I got there about 6 15 or so and mm -hmm. so it's getting I think about 6 45 we got there so I filmed that in real time like what you see is what I wanted to show the entire drive from the start I found exactly where they started they said in one of the police reports the corner of this and this is where they tied them up and stuff uh, to the back of the the truck I wanted to show that in real time and as I filmed it dude it's long it's a like I had to edit it, and that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to show the entire drive, so you, the audience, gets to know how brutal that was. Mm -hmm. But it was a good ten minute drive to the church where they ultimately left him. But um, you know, and then there's only they talk about the one raised cement uh, sewer grate where he struck was was the fatal blow, uh, pretty much. If he wasn't dead already, I mean, to say that's a fatal blow, I mean, after five minutes of being dragged, but I found that. And then after that, I was like, okay, I can't put all this in the video because this is too long to drive. And so I went to the church, being at that church in the middle, like literally, well, the middle of nowhere, Texas, and just thinking how lonely that is. And it's it, like, like lonely and, you know, dumping a body like that. And what and the other thing I put it I said everything that they did to him because they, in the news reports they didn't say everything like they they humiliated him and mm -hmm. you know did some horrible horrible things before they ultimately tied him and dragged him but and then I went to then I got to the cemetery and I met a lovely woman and her daughter who were visiting the, the mother's parents or the girl's grandparents and we were talking that they knew all about James Bird and that cemetery they were saying. Uh, cause he's got gates around, right? Around yeah. his grave. That, that always interested me because I wanted to go see that because people were still desecrating the grave in like the early 2000s, 1990s. And that cemetery has, is no longer segregated, but it kind of is. And that's what the, the lady was African American. She was saying, my family's on this side. She was on that side more for, was more for the white side. She goes, and it still kind of is. And it was just like, Jesus Christ. Like, that's nuts. Yeah, and then just the movie, I just think that they did the best they could with the special effects, to, but nobody can recreate that. Like, no, I mean, I you, it's worse to, it, if, if so, to, to actually show everything they did. I mean, that's uh, in a movie, it's, it's worse than a horror movie. You know what I mean? I, it's just something you can't, I don't think. I read a lot about it. There was a huge, like, 20-page article on it. And getting I couldn't even get through it because I was just getting... It was just so upsetting to read. Like, so upsetting to read. But, um, you know, every now and again, that video pops up. Uh, like, you know, it's, it did really well, but it gets in. Like, every now and again, I'll be like, why? It, it'll also get so, two, 3,000 views a day, then settle down again. So people find it, which is great. And that's what, something that I always want, you know. I wanted that video to do really well because I want people to know the story. Yeah. Yeah. And that really made me want to tell it to 
my subscribers because I just really wanted to paint him as a person that was loved because usually um, when people be lynched like that, um, people focus on the hate, but they don't really focus on um, the people that love them. And so, right. And, right. And I was able to um, watch some footage of his children talk about it. And they said that no matter how many years it's been, like it still um, resonates with them. And, and I can't really um, imagine that was, because I know what it's like. I know that pain all too well, but just to have something like that, um, just unbelievable and unexpected. And yeah, I mean, you feel helpless if that's your like you you hear about parents when something happens to their children, you know, being regretful that uh, the rest of their lives that they can't be, they, you know, if they're call if they were they calling out for me in their last moments and something like that with my country. But it's the same with kids, like that's somebody's father. And like you, you, I would think every morning when you wake up, you think what happened, how your father, the, the terrifying last moments of his life mm -hmm. for his kids and for, I know his mother, I think was still alive. I don't think yeah. she would be anymore, but I think she was alive when it happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to know that happened to her, her child and for the, for the reasons that it happened, like it's so, ugh, ugh. I don't know. I don't, know. I, I don't get it. I, I, it's just one of those things. It's so basic to me when it comes to, like, when we're talking about race. Like, I, I don't get it. Like, I don't, I don't, I, I get it because I've studied it and I read about it. I just don't know. What, what the hell do you care what color somebody is? Like, what mm -hmm. is it? What, why do people, it still goes on. And you, see, I, you know, Twitter is so toxic. I'll go on to read stuff about something and it's always oh, race brought up. And, you know, it's so crazy. Yeah. You know, that it exists still. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love the the one that you did with Bill Cosby's son too. Ernest, oh yeah, Ernest. Ernest, yeah. Yeah, Ernest, yeah. Ernest. I think I think yeah, every time I pass that, because that's a major that's a four or five through cuts through Brentwood and uh Beverly Hills. So he's off of um uh what uh squirt uh whatever it's a weird name the street where but anyway that's like a i don't know 15 lane highway going through there so you got to go through there to get uh, if you're going north and south from uh north hollywood down to santa monica or venice beach so every time i drive by there i look at it and if i'm with somebody i tell them like right up there that's where it happened like just off that road that's a crazy story and i went to i went to all the locations i went to them all at night the, the 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 murder happened at night, mm -hmm. but where the guy worked and all that, I went there. I went there right afterwards. But it was just cause that was early on in YouTube. I think that was like my first year, so I thought oh, it doesn't matter if I'm there at nighttime or daytime. But it was pouring rain too, like you can see in the video. So I wish some of the stuff, I the, the nighttime stuff where he was murdered, I liked that because it was at night. But the rest of it, I wish I showed. Uh, I wish I showed during the day. But that's a terrible. That's a weird case, too. I mean, that was just, who knows why that guy did it. Was he trying to, was he really trying to carjack him? Or was he trying to be part of a gang? You know, he bragged about it afterwards. And now he's in prison for the rest of his life. Yeah. And a lot of people forget about that. And and I can't imagine, like, again, um, you know, I don't, Excuse what he, what Bill Cosby done, you know. I don't right. want people to get it twisted, but the man been through a lot in his yeah. all his life. But it's just a lot of people forget about that particular um, incident, and I can't like fathom like just getting a call like that, and just and then when you visit these places and stuff, I just would be like, man, I could probably just sense like. Because a lot of people think people just go into the afterlife, but some people probably still um, at their um, like these places and stuff. Yeah. Like we would yeah. never know. But well, that's <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm 
torn on how I believe in that sort of stuff, but I, I always think that a uh, murder victim or uh, something like that is never resting peacefully. I, I don't think so. I mean, it, I, I, whether it's at the place where it happened or somewhere, I don't think that their soul is resting peacefully. And that's a that's a lonely little stretch of road where it happened. And I mean, he was being a good Samaritan. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's yeah. trying to help somebody. And that he, he's not... Uh, he's not his father's son, or he's not his son. Like, take away the fact that he's Bill Cosby's son. You know, Ennis right. Cosby, Cosby was in Bill Cosby's routines. Like, when Bill Cosby would make jokes about his family, he always used the name Ennis. Yeah. You know, and he, I knew Ennis growing, you know, growing up, I knew about Ennis because he, Eddie Murphy talked about him and stuff. But um, he, he's not, like, for that story, I was like, because at that time when I did it, that Bill Cosby stuff was just breaking and it was all coming out. So I was like, huh, how do I cover this? And I was like, I don't give a shit. You know what? It doesn't have anything to do with Bill Cosby. I mean, it's Bill Cosby's son. Yeah. Yeah, but he's not his father's. He's not his son. He's he's not his father's son. Like just because Bill Cosby committed some horrible things, yeah. and it's everything I read about him, everybody loved him, and he was the nicest, most charitable man around. Mm -hmm. and you see pictures of him, he's always smiling and, and he looks like a great guy. Yeah, so what's up, man? And I'm happy that you covered that. But I really want to talk about the Sam Cooke one, too. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Because I was really, like, blown away because I really thought that he would have had, like, a bigger grave or, like, a mausoleum or that's what it, that's how you, yeah, yeah. I thought he would have had something like that, but yeah, he's just pretty much in a area where he's pretty ducked off. And and to me, I I really just explain people to people because I'm 34, so I explain to people like, man, like he was like the Nipsey of the 60s, mm -hmm. um, and just the fact that his life got cut so short and. And he was in his prime, for real. Like, I think he was in his prime when he started because he didn't lose a step. He really didn't have to – because he really was, like, formed – well, he was, like, a gospel singer first. So it was like he already learned all, like, the techniques, the, the, the vocal talent and the vocal ability. So it wasn't like he had to climb up the ladder. He just was – there when he started to me yeah. like he always had that voice so he just inspired me so much because that song um somebody eased my trouble in mind because you went to his son vincent grave as well so when i hear that song i feel that he's mourning his son yeah yeah probably i would say i would wonder what time it was written if he sang it before i don't know if he wrote that did he write that song it doesn't matter but i'm just wondering yeah. if it was before or after his little son that was tough i mean seeing the house where his son passed away in that pool that's a, yeah. that's a hard house to find by the way like it's right really? in hollywood but yeah but it, all the addresses don't match up online if uh -huh. you get if you get the address you go to that address the house is not there so I had to get out of my car and keep walking around. I, and I know that area. I know Holland pretty well. I had to ask this girl. I was like, I was like, do you know where this like this house is? Or this thing? she's looking at me like, what? She's like, no, I have no idea. I'm like, what the hell? So I was I had to keep walking up and down. Finally, I found it. But uh, he's buried in that in that in a special area of Forest Lawn Glendale. I mean, right across, like directly across from him is Sammy Davis Jr. So at the time when he was buried, I don't know if it was a private family plot area or not. It's quite beautiful. You would think, you would, but you would also think Sammy Davis Jr. would have a mausoleum. There's lots of select. Mm -hmm. Like, look at Frank Sinatra. He's got the mm -hmm. most plain grave in the middle of the desert, like Palm Springs, uh, Palm Desert Cemetery, wherever he is, I've been. You would think Frank Sinatra would have a, the size of the White House almost, right? But some, right. Celebrities, some celebrities, I said it on another video. I said, I, I can't remember who it was. I said, I know you're probably shocked at this grave. Oh, God, it was, just, it was one this year. I said, you got to understand, it's not necessarily, there's many reasons why somebody can have a, just a flat headstone and nothing else. Because 
they 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 could be deeply religious and believe in bringing no um yeah, what's it what's the term um no being humble before your lord type of thing so yeah. no gaudiness around you know g-a-u-d gaudiness like no big crazy stuff or the family has to pay for another time you know his wife maybe you know she's facing the prospect of raising two other kids i believe it was she doesn't know how much money she's going to get from the record company if you know how much money he had so she's got to pay maybe she's going to afford a mausoleum or maybe you know i he was pretty young so i don't think he probably had a request like you know i, I want a simple grave you never know why you never know it's weird. Like, you never know why celeb some celebrities, Karen Carpenter has this huge mausoleum, and then some other ones have just one headstone, or, like, Roy Orbison doesn't even have a headstone, you know? Yeah. And I like that you went to the location where he was shot. Um, so what is that place now? Well, it's funny, because that's, uh, it's, that's really right in the middle of Los Angeles. It's down off of... Um, uh, start out Segundo. Uh, it's right in the middle of the city. I forget. I forget what street it's on. Mm -hmm. F F Figaro. F it's off at Figaro Street. Yeah, it's, okay. it's on Figaro. And um, it's funny because there's a dollar store there, a giant dollar store. Then a parking lot. Then this old motel with an old sign. And it's in the parking lot. That's where the building used to stand, the Hacienda Hotel, where motel where he was murdered. And yeah. so many people, it, uh, not so many, but a few people wrote and said, dude, the motel's still there. It's right there to your left. Like, that's it. You still, It's still standing. That's a motel. And I got fed up after, like, two people I, after writing about it. I'm like, I'm like, no, you're looking. I said, I understand you see that in some of the pictures. Yeah. But that's a different building. that ha And they're like, no, the sign matches up. I'm like, yeah, the sign matches up on a different building. There were two motels <laughs> side by side. It happened. <laughs> I said, I said, look at look at the photo I put in. You can see there's a wall and a gap, then another wall. Like, and I was told that that area is. I've been all through Los Angeles, so it doesn't bother. But I was told that that area is, you know, sketch. And it's so not. It's so nice. Everybody, like, I was walking around, doing you know, whatever. Uh, there was a couple of um, taco stands there, and uh, but there's, it's, it was a nice. Uh, I mean, I remember that day well. It was it was a Sunday. It was Sunday. I got there about four o'clock, right after I went to the house, and it was really nice. And then, you know, I'm looking. I got to look at it first. I'm looking at the sun because the sun's setting in the west. And I'm shooting west. So I'm like all oh, this problems. And then once I started shooting, I'm like, oh shit! Now I got to tell the story. <laughs> you know, then now I got to <laughs> tell the bad part. That's when it hits me all every time. Yeah. Right now. And so. I kind of started off with it, then I ended with it, then I did the rest of the voiceover because I wanted to get every fact, you know, right. And actually, at that corner, at Figaro and whatever cross street is to the north, that's where the young lady, I can't remember, something Jenkins, but she was shot by the, she was a young black woman, she was shot by the Korean grocer. And mm -hmm. that was one of the... Uh, flare-ups for the beginning of the L.A. riots. That's a, that's a very famous location for the L.A. riots, too. Right yeah. there. Like, literally, right, that do that dollar store used to be two or three other stores, and that's where that Verizon was, which was, like, the epicenter of the L.A. riots, which is crazy. And I knew that when I was there, and I was like, well, I've always wanted to do something on the L.A. riots. I'll come back and do it. And a lot of people write to me and say, you know what happened, by the way, right behind you? And I'm like, yeah, because that's a, that's, a, that's a big subject. Yeah, you would think it's like a Indian burial ground. <laughs> yeah, there's some bad juju on that on that block for sure. I mean, the Sam Cooke thing is just. You wonder how much bigger he would have been. I think he. I think he was just. He was. He was pretty huge, but he would have been even bigger. You yeah. know, he would have been even bigger. He had every. He had the look. He had the voice. He had the swagger. You know, he had the. He had the intellect because he was starting like you know he was signing other artists. I mean. You don't hear about that too much. It was more record companies back in the day were signing artists, not artists signing other artists and bringing them along, trying to bring them along with them. Like, you don't hear about that very often, but Sam Cooke was really all about that. Oh, absolutely. Because he was um, going to sign Muhammad Ali. <laughs> so yeah. I, tell, I tell people that all the time, like, y'all be so fascinated with today's times, but someone 
have to do it first. You know, this was somebody who paved the way. And he paved yeah. the way. He really showed us the blueprint as far as, like, the business and everything like that. It's just unfortunate of what happened after that and everything like that. But he's so yeah. he's so far he's so popular still, but a lot of people didn't also know him when I put the video up because it started off good and then went slow. Mm -hmm. I was like, hmm, okay. Like I kind of thought more. Then then it really took off because it got into the algorithm and uh, Sam Cooke fans and other people discovered. But I remember. Like uh, last year, twice the year before, being at Forest Lawn Glendale one day when um, the area where Joe Jackson's buried, Michael Jackson's father, that's a locked area too, right? Not too far from Sammy and Sam. And I got in there because the door was open, and I asked somebody if I could go in there. Like, oh sure, they, they had no clue that I was. There. I'm not welcome at that cemetery anymore. I can tell you that because after all this, after going into all these private areas, but I got I had permission from family members, but. I would always pass where Sammy Davis and Sam Cook were and mm -hmm. those big walls. And I knew they were right there. I was like, oh, I will never, ever be able to get in there. And those are two that I always wanted to show. And yeah. then out of, you know, some people being so sweet, like a family member just contacted me and said, hey, you ever want to go visit, you know, Sammy Davis, Sam Cook, and somebody else who's coming up on my channel? I can get you into the private areas. I was like, I responded within like a second. I'm like, yes. Yeah, I do, because that's important, you know. It's it's sad that people can't go and visit some of these people, but that's the way the family wants it. Yeah, that's that's what's up, man. Because I just think that people just need to learn how to respect families more. Yeah, because it still hurts. So, right. I have somebody else coming up. I don't know if I can put up the video because. It's a very, very super, even more famous than Sam Cooke, a uh, famous person whose grave I found and the family has completely scrubbed it off the internet. Every time it's, every time somebody posts anything about it, they, it gets taken down. Like not on YouTube, I'm talking about websites, any, anywhere. Uh, if you look up this person's grave, and I went to it and I found it and I filmed it, but even while I was filming, I was like, I don't know if I'm ever gonna be able to upload this. Cause you never know, you know, I, I don't like, I want the, I've gotten such nice responses from family members of celebrities and of you non celebrities when I visit the graves. I don't ever want to get that one. That's just like, Hey, like take this down. That's my dad or that's whatever. That would, I would, that would, yeah. hate, hate that. I would hate that. I'd be more like, you feel like a jerk. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't, I don't necessarily, I'm not one of these YouTubers that does, I don't go for views. Like, I mean, I want views cause I want people to see the work I did. But I'm not, yeah. like, I'm not, I'm not like, ah, this is good. If I do this, this will get so many views and, you know, nobody else did this. I'm like, I, I'm in no rush. I've got videos coming up that I know nobody else has done, mm -hmm. but I'll just, I, I put them up in, in the order I want. And also I go to places that I think are interesting to me and that I hope other people find interesting, you know, but I'm not competitive when it comes to stuff like that, but I might put it up. I don't know. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, um, I wanted to talk about Wilson Pickett. I, I love that one. Yeah, Wilson, my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I spent a lot of time in that cemetery. That's a, he's in um, Kentucky, right? Mm -hmm. You're right. Uh, I remember, because I thought I'd, I'd been to, like pretty much, like a lot of people write to me on their live chats or elsewhere and go like, can you go to this grave? Can you go to this grave? And I'm like, I've already been, I just haven't uploaded it yet. Like, you know, like a lot. So a lot, so every grave in Kentucky you can think of, I've been to, I just haven't put them up yet. And then one, I was, I just remember waking up one morning in Kentucky, getting ready to drive further south. And for some reason, I looked up famous graves in Kentucky. Cause I just had, there's some, I, I don't know why. And then I saw Wilson Pickett. I was like, Wilson Pickett? How did, what did, why? <laughs> And then I looked up where he was, and it said, like, 15 minutes from where I was. I was like, how did this slip by? And then when I got there, I, I did a bunch of things during the day. I got there later in the day, and it was impossible. Couldn't find him. Couldn't find him at all. Like, could I, I found, I think I showed in the video, I found his mom on mm -hmm. the lawn, and then nothing. So I was like, I, I assumed, I was like, okay, 
uh, he must be buried beside his mom in an unmarked grave. And then I saw a picture, a really close-up picture of a plaque that said his name and his birthday and, and death date. So I was like, no, it's March. And, I, you know, I love so many of his songs. So I was not going to give up. And I went to the front, and they were so sweet. They were like, oh, yeah, no, he's buried in the mausoleum in the back, and it's it's a locked mausoleum. I was like, ah, okay. And you normally, if you go to mausoleums, are, if it's a private mausoleum, they're locked for failure. If it's a private mausoleum, or if it's a mausoleum that's locked, but it's the public, over for the public, but it's locked, it's just after five. You know, they lock the mausoleums before the grounds. And this little old lady, she goes, hold on one moment. And literally, I, I mean, I watched her walk away, into her, it must have taken her 10 minutes. She was, she had to be in about 90, the sweet thing. She like, it took her 10 minutes just to walk to the office. And I was like, wow, like what's going on? She came back, she handed me the key. And she goes, there you go. Uh, you'll find him in the back. And I, I was like, so happy. So I went and did the video and found him. And, and you know, all, it's great. I was so happy that I forgot to find him. And then when I went back to give her the key, she said, oh no, you keep that, you keep that. And, uh, I was, she goes, if you ever want to come back and visit Mr. Pickett. And she said, are you family? And I said, I said no, no, I'm not family. <laughs> uh, we don't look that much alike. But no. <laughs> no, we don't, we don't resemble each other. But she was so sweet. And I said, no, no, we're not family. I said, so I don't need the key. She goes, well, just keep it. If you ever want to come back, you just come back and you can go visit him anytime you want. And I almost took it because I was like, oh, what a cool souvenir. But then I thought, you know what? I don't know how many keys they have. And I don't know. Somebody, I want other people. I want other people to, if they are, if they're in Kentucky and they want to see what's all going through Kentucky, I want other people to be able to go to these places after I've been, right? Yeah. So I said, no, you keep the key. I, I'll, if I ever come back, I'll just come back and get it again. You know, like what? What? It'd be a cool thing to have like on a keychain type of thing for me. But I want other people to be able to use that key to get into these places. Yeah, that's dope, man. And. And you remember my request, right? But what was no? What was your request? Lamont Bentley. Ah, oh, that we. <laughs> well, Will, I will. That was I forgot. Will, that was you. Yeah. I, 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 as I say to everybody, keep watching. Oh yeah, yeah. I got I'm you. Watching. I'm talking. I, <laughs> I, I learned. Uh, you know what? I don't want you and I are going to talk after. Obviously, I filmed it. Obviously, I went to Lamont. I'm giving away Lamont Bentley. Um, but I, you know what? I could put that, I'll put that video up this week, maybe, or next week. I'll put it up soon because I've got so many. But I, I did just say, but I couldn't do the exact way I wanted it to do it because I found where the car crash happened, right? Yeah. And I passed that area. When you're going, that's like a kind of, that's a back backwards way to get up to Malibu and all that. And, further in North Hollywood where he crashed. And it's a weird, there's, to, to get down to where it happened, you're literally, you're on uh, the 101 freeway just asking to get hit. You know what I mean? Okay. Like for me, if I was to park my car somewhere and try to wander over to where it happened, it's just, it, it wasn't safe. But uh, I got you. Okay, thank yeah. you, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I never really knew, well, I knew about it, but I just never, um could imagine um like the location like could visualize the location so appreciate you for that yeah well you know <laughs> what when you look up when you look up anything about lamont bentley's crash mm -hmm. there's so little online about it everything that comes up is brandy's car crash because brandy had a very famous car crash do you remember she ran into some people or something yeah a few years yeah. ago so because he was on brandy so every time you look up Lamont Bentley car crash, with it, with, there's like one article, one thing on it, and the rest, every other picture is Brandy standing outside her car on her cell phone. I'm like, no, I want the Lamont car crash. <laughs> and so it's frustrating, but I found the location and uh, you'll see in the video, I, I, I learned a lot about him. So that was thanks to you, because I, I, I didn't, I, it's not a voiceover one. I, 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 I me memorized and learned and read about him. He had quite a spectacular life. You know, 28 years old, I believe he was. He was young. 28, 29. Another guy just... Uh, horrible way to horrible. Yeah, Michelle saying Scott doesn't park legally. That's right. 
<laughs> I I do when it's when there's parking available, but now I've learned after five years of being on YouTube because I always was every seat I went to I was always so petrified about parking in a ticket or towed, and then I just now I'm just like no I'll just put the car over here now do it here that's what I do. Yeah, man. Again, appreciate that man because you know he he meant a lot to like us you know like because we used to watch Moesha faithfully. Right. And just the fact that um, Tales from the Hood, like, um, that's my favorite movie of all time. Oh, like, really? That's a yeah. great movie. And I just think that um, he really just enhanced his acting chops because he was just always playing, like, good good guys on TV. Yeah. So this was like, um, like he wasn't typecast. Like he could do anything, and and I think that if he would have just lived, like he would have been phenomenal too. So, yeah, I mean, you gotta. I, I it's so like I, why I, I know I you'll see in the video because I, I ask the same questions. I mean, why like why, like the speed, the speed, the rate at which he was going, and you know, and you'll see what the headstone says and all that. I mean, it's it's heartbreaking. It's a heartbreaking story. But yeah, I went back. Uh, what day was that? Because I—that's for he's at Forest Lawn, Hollywood Hills. He's up. He's up in the area where um, Ronnie James Dio, Betty Davis. Like he's like there's heavy people up near him. Uh, Liberace, I think, is up in there. He's at the main one up to the left. But yeah, I found in um, there was some tour group going on too. That was weird. That was kept walking past me while I was trying to talk, and they kept walking back and forth behind me. And I was like, "What is like? It's, it's like getting down a corridor." And I was like, "Nobody's ever come down any." And the time that I'm trying to film, I've you know, but you'll see. It was a, uh, yeah, I could have. I it was I, I at the time. I, I probably on my video. I probably said this is for you, Will. I probably mentioned you, but now it's been like three months, so I've completely forgotten anything I did. But now I think I start to remember. Yeah, you'll see it too. Oh, thank you, man. I'm glad I hit the bill, so I'm going to be stalking it. <laughs> yeah, stalking yeah, it'll be man. coming up. Yeah, I've got a yeah. lot to do, but yeah, he's he's definitely one I want to put up, for sure. That's good, man. And do you have, like, well, I know that you can't reveal every day, but um, so is it somebody that you want to cover, uh, but you kind of, like, uh, I don't know how people gonna feel about this, but is it somebody that you want to cover? Um, you know, they're not, not not offhand, not that I can think of. But I always ask myself, uh, and I was just talking about this with friends the other day. I was saying that I always ask myself before I film a video whatever topic it is, especially if it's like a true crime or something scandalous or a grave or maybe something that's not true. I always ask, is this a video, if I put up, will I have to turn off the comments? Which I've never done. I've never done that. Turned off the comments so people can't comment on a video. If I have to turn off the comments for a video, I'm not going to film it. You know what I mean? Because that means that it's either the subject matter is going to be too um, horrific or too different sides, everything. Or when I'm filming, and then when I'm filming a tough subject, I kind of think to myself, okay, am I, if I go into this part of the case or this part of this part, like, is this going to make me have to turn off the comments? So that's something I never want to do. I never want to have to turn off the comments. So there's not anything that I could think of that I haven't done, but there's lots I'm going to do. I have so much planned. But, uh, you know, I've done, I've got so many, like, so many serial killer stuff coming up and, you know, <coughs> Yeah, it, but there's no real subject. I mean, yeah, there's been a there's been a couple of things where I haven't filmed like uh, not even that. But I mean, graves. I'm I, I'll never run out of so of interesting stories of graves. Once I've done, I've done so many celebrities. Once I've done with celebrities, you know, there's there's always interesting graves. But I I like to do stuff that have something to do with pop culture. Right, yeah. I've got some great true crime coming up that doesn't have anything to do with pop culture, 
but I filmed them because I had access to certain things that people wrote to me about. And they said, you can come here and get inside here. And I was like, oh, that's too good to pass up. But it doesn't have anything to do with pop culture. But oh, well, you know, because I, I, I kind of got to keep my channel towards pop culture somehow. Like OJ, yeah. pop culture, you know, <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer, Jeffrey Dahmer, unfortunately, you know, serial killer pop culture. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but no, nothing I can think of yet. I'm sure there'll be something I'll come up that I'll be like, yeah. Yeah, um, I always wanted to ask you, did you ever want to have your own show, like, as far as, like, off YouTube or, like, on a major network someday? You know, I w I've, gotten, I've gotten some crazy, cool, like, offers and stuff like that. Not, you know, and people, uh, I just did something for Discovery Channel in June. No. July, sorry. Okay. They flew me out to Vancouver to do something. That was cool. And uh, going really well with the producer and the exec producer stuff. And it was just, I've had, uh, I Universal just took um, one of my videos that they're going to be using in something in a, in a, either a movie or a documentary they're doing. And I've had, I've had other smaller things offered to me. I don't know. You know what? I would do it. I would do something like that, but only if I could continue to do the channel. And that's that was a sticking point for a couple of people that I talked to who, who wanted to do bigger projects with me. They wanted, I don't want to get it too much, you know, but they wanted stuff like first look at my videos before I upload them, send them to them, and they get to choose if they want to do that topic with me on a thing. And I'm like, I can't spend six hours editing something, then get ready to put up, and then have to send it to somebody else first, have you wait five, me wait a week to know whether like that to me is like no it's a no brand and also i have full creative control you know yeah. what i mean yeah that's you know I, the, it, the money would have to be great but i learned a lesson i'll tell you one thing never be too precious with your own material or too proud because when i was like 22 i i wrote a screenplay and then my friend and i rewrote it together well he likes to think he rewrote it with me but i did go with the word anyway but a, a film production company in Toronto uh, wanted to buy the script for $50,000. And this is a while ago. I was 22. And I said, well, yeah, but I'm going to be in it. I'm the star of this when you make it. They're like, no, no, no. We want the script, not you. And I'm like, no, I'm the star. And, and then they were like, well, then we don't want the script. I'm like, well, you don't get the script now. If I had $50,000 at the age of 22, you know how much happier I would have been through my 20s? <laughs> so I learned my lesson. You know, if the price is right, sell out. What do I care? <laughs> if somebody offers me a lot of money to do a big project and, you know, never say never. Yeah, and I, and I love that about you, man. Like, because people don't have integrity no more. And, and for my story or whatever, um, I would have had, like, a article on M Live, but they wanted me to change the name of my show. But I told them, if the state of Michigan can approve my LLC, then what's the problem? And they were just talking about, well, it's too controversial, and, and my boss kind of would look at me funny and this and that. And I went to college with this guy. Like, he became a reporter after he graduated. So I'm thinking, like, okay, well, if they don't understand me, at least you understand me, but Technically, he still insists of me changing my name. And that would have kind of um, made me cross over because I'm good in the hood and everything. So, but that would have made me cross over. To, like, yeah, you kind of want to keep I'm, your own thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love what I do because I'm helping people just like you helping people because it's not about the money. It's all about the legacy. So that's what I wanted to because I'm pretty much touching on a lot of things like you touch on a lot of things. Um, I really implement history in my on my channel too. So I didn't want to just lose the essence of that because me doing what I'm doing really what catapulted me to this point now. So I didn't want to just change who I am. I love to be comfortable. I love to use the kind of dialogue that I want. And I didn't want to just be Mr. Hollywood and stuff like that because the people who do know me personally, they like, oh, man, this ain't him. <laughs> so, yeah. So I just wanted to keep 
my soul. So I'm really happy that you said that. Cause yeah, I've always said, I, I, yeah, I mean, same thing. I've always said, I've always just said, I said yes to the Discovery Channel because it was just like, and I really didn't, I was like, I just got back from LA for seven weeks and then they wanted to fly a week later. They're like, can you come to Vancouver? And I was like, I was like getting back on a plane for five hours. I just got my dog back, you know, for my friends after seven weeks. I was exhausted, but you know, there was they were so nice. We had Zoom calls and arranged it. They were so sweet. I was like, I can't say no to these people. Then you know, like it's gonna good exposure. But I've said no to lots of people. I've just been like, you know, no, I'm not gonna give up my channel. I'm not gonna give up the rights to the name or the like. The subject matter is out there for anybody to cover. But I'm not gonna give up. You know the rights. I mean, all I, I don't need to get rich. I don't need to get famous. I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. I just care about presenting my. I I do care about making money so I can continue yeah. to do it because you have to have money to do it. So, but rich, no. Famous, no. But integrity, like you said, and the the ability. I want people to see the stuff I do. Like every now and again, I put up. I, I think tomorrow I might. Tomorrow I'm deciding what to put up, but it could be a fun video where I'm just acting stupid on camera. I do that every four or five videos just to, you know, because that's another part of me. That's another ask side of me. But otherwise, I want people to watch my stuff and be either moved or seek out more information about the topic. You know, and I want people to appreciate the filmmaking. I don't I don't know if I'll get that in other, if I went with other, you know, production companies or some things like that. I don't know. I don't think I would. Right now, I get to do whatever I want. Oh, yeah. I got some good stuff coming in Detroit. You'll see what I'm, where I'm going, man. You're gonna be <laughs> oh, shocked. Oh, I can't wait, man. And and um, everything about to die over here, man. But always oh, a pleasure, bum bro. All right, you know, man. We family. <laughs> yeah. All right, we family. Uh, I'll give you a text before I get out to uh, Detroit. See whereabouts you are. Maybe we can meet up okay. halfway. Yeah, because I'll be there. Ooh. Should be on the September September seventh. Uh, depending on what time I get out of the city, I'm, it's it's always a try. It's always a hassle getting out of Toronto into Detroit. But I go. I'm now. I can go a different way. But I go up through the north, like near you. So, yeah, I'll give you a text before. Okay, no doubt, right. man. And you have yourself a good night, man. It's always a pleasure. We keep in touch. Thanks, bro. Talk to you later, man. I'm gonna roll you too. Peace.